Um, good evening, it's Mike Brewer and welcome to uh, what is going to be a fantastic chat with a friend that I've got to know over the years and we worked together actually on the mics, it's been very exciting because please welcome Mike Coman, Mike runs the uh, Restoration Theatre at the Lancaster Insurance Classic Motor Show and the PC Resto Show. Uh, Mike, how is it up north? It's all right mate, it's not too bad. Getting dark early, so we have to put up with that and obviously all this lockdown, but we're trying to keep our end up, as it were. Oh, good. Well, good for you, because it's a, it's a trying time for everyone at the moment. Uh, there's something that's happening in the classic car world, though, during lockdown 1.0 and now coming into lockdown 2.0. Uh, there have been, like, movements in the classic car world. The classic car world has, has almost had a bit of a, a bump. It's gone up. Uh, because people have now gone into their garages and started working on their cars. Yeah, I mean, that's one positive you've got to take from this sort of thing. People have got time to go and finish those things that they've been saying they're going to finish for ages. Like behind me, I've got a list of jobs there to do, but as <laughs> well, I, can get some, uh, I can get some time on the car. Obviously, we're still working at the garage as much as possible. Uh, staying safe, keeping to all the guidelines and everything, but trying to get through customers' work, keeping in contact with customers, <clears throat> excuse me, and sort of having a dialogue with them, making sure they want us to keep going with their projects and everything at the moment. Now, you and your team, uh, you run the Restoration Theatre at the shows that we I host throughout the year, you know, at the NEC. And I get a chance to run around and grab the microphone and do a little bit of maybe, I don't know, uh, beanbag work or English wheel work with you. And we've had uh, some good fun in the past. How long have you been involved with that? Um, I, well, myself and Steve, who are the team at Gilbert Michelson, uh, we've been doing them as previous. We worked at the college and as Gilbert Michelson now, we've been doing them for 18 years or so, I think. Um, so I did 15 years at the college and then we've been doing it ever since as well. Uh, and meeting the, meeting the public, talking to them, talking to them about their projects. And because we've been doing it so long, we've actually met people year on year who come back, tell us what they talked to us about the year before, how they've put that into practice over the year, how their projects has gone on. We've had people come to us over a number of years and come with pictures of a chassis in the beginning and then they show us a finished car where they will take us over to us a stand and actually show us their car at the at the show where they've they've worked on it and and because we've answered some questions and helped them out pointed them in the right direction they've been able to complete the restoration so it's it's something we really enjoy and we're sort of passionate about sharing what we have um and anybody can come to us with a question and we'll quite happily answer it. Or if we haven't got an answer exactly right there, then we'll get back in touch with them afterwards if we can. And they want yeah. us to. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an enjoyable thing we've been doing for a long, long time. Well, you've got a wealth of knowledge between you and uh, I've stood there and watched you as well with the crowd. And uh, yeah, I witnessed that. I witnessed them coming up with their little folders of pictures. And, you know, most of those guys are really proud uh, of what they've achieved and they just want to show off that their work and say to you, look, I was here last year. You showed me how to do a bonnet bulge uh, for my on my bonnet, and you showed me how to do that. And I went away and I did it. I did it myself, and I, I've seen that enthusiasm. It must be thrilling because for me, as a classic car restorer, there's no better feeling than having somebody come up to you and say, because of you, I did this, and that happens to you at every show. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. It's it's. It's what's it's the enjoyable side of sharing your knowledge. Um, like you said, there's nothing better than when somebody comes back to you and says, "Oh, you told me about this, or I watched your lead loading demonstration, or your wheeling demonstration, whichever one it was." Or if we've uh, Steve or Matt has talked to them about the paint side of things, and then they come back and they show you, and they'll say, "You um, enthused me to do this, or you you got me into doing it." And it's I I was a bit scared before, but I had a go. And it, yeah, it's fantastic. It's what keeps us sort of going, really. I mean, obviously, we do it every day as a job, and we're always learning. And and I think the best way for us to keep the classic car movement going, and that is sharing that knowledge. There's 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 nothing. I don't find anything better really than sharing. I'll, and I'll share everything I know. Being there with you and watching you share your knowledge with the audience. Um, 
obviously it's a theatre that's a two-way theatre. So you're not only educating the audience, the audience can engage and interact with you. What's the, what's the most question you get? What is the question you get asked most? Um, Other than, are you available to come and work on my car? Yeah, I mean, well, to be, to be absolutely frank with you, that one doesn't come up that often. But um, it's... It's normally about the, the different aspects sort of draw different questions, if you will. If somebody wants to talk to us about pain, it's normally how much would it be? How long does it take? And then we have to get into sort of discussing with them the different stages of the paint job and explaining how long these things take. Because to be fair, when you tell somebody how to proper paint job, uh, costs they normally have to we have to pick them up off the floor because they they seem to think that you can still get a blow over for 800 quid and things like that and when when we tell them we can't buy the materials required to do a proper paint job for 800 pounds then they sort of they take a bit of a step back so that that there's that one about the paint then um it's it's all there isn't really one question we can get welding questions then it's sort of wire size, how do I set my welder up, um, what gas shall I use, and how do I practice, are there any courses available, then we get mechanical questions where they come with a problem, and like somebody will come and they, they, I remember one guy was on about his brake pedal was pulsing under his foot and we were saying right well your, your discs are probably warped, but you've got to do a proper investigation and so Steve then went through step by step of how to investigate what might be wrong. So that's, that's one of the things it's like, there are questions we get year on year, but most of the time, every single person who comes up is different. So it keeps it fresh. We quite often do the same demonstrations year on year, but again, we get new people coming up, always thanking us for what we're doing. And it, it just changes because there's a, a, there's like a throughput of people. So, it keeps it brilliant. Like you said, the, the interaction with the people is, is, is fantastic. I came into cars from another career. I was more customer focused. I was in catering first. And so customer service and all that kind of stuff is, is very much at the forefront of how we work at Gilbert Michelson. And so talking to people and discussing stuff with people, and making sure they're happy with what you've talked to them about is, is great. And so that weekend, even though, as you well know, by the end of it, you're absolutely wrung out like a chamois leather. It's fantastic. We get so much out of it and, and, and just enjoy talking to people. It's great, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, when you was talking there about paint and about, uh, you know, people's, uh, managing people's expectations with paint, yeah. uh, no doubt you've just had to do that with an MGB because somebody came in for a bit of paint and it ended up being a complete restoration. Yeah, it did. Um, our customer, Roy, is a, a fantastic gentleman. He's really, really nice. And um, he came to us and he'd, he'd bought a car from uh, Dry State in America in the early 90s. So it was rust-free when it came to the, these shores. Uh, and he's like, oh, I think it's, it's fairly solid and, and we just want a paint job so it came to us and it was this fairly nasty turquoise color um and we kind of had a look at it and it was quite crusty underneath and we sort of thought right well we're gonna have to have a really good scrape at this so we did and it's ended up being floors both sides <laughs> uh, middle sill and outer sill both sides two front wings two rear wings uh, boot floor repairs and uh, front apron repairs, all sorts of stuff, and then a full paint job on top. So he ended up, he's probably paid at least twice, if not more than what he was originally thinking he was gonna. But what's gone back to him is an absolutely fantastic car. It's solid as a rock now, because it was only the sort of periphery panels that were a bit frilly and, and rotten, all the sort of, real good chassis stuff like the inner sill and all the chassis rails under the floors were absolutely rock solid so that's all stayed been rust proofed and then everything else has gone and what we eventually got him to do as well was he got in touch with heritage found out that the car originally came out of the factory in blaze orange and so we've painted it back to its original that's blaze orange so it's, it's an absolutely cracking car and when you start putting the bits of trim on it 
because when you open a tin of Blaze Orange, it's kind of real. Ooh, yeah, know. yeah. But you put it on the car and then bits of the trim go against it, the black and the tires and all that kind of stuff. It's, it just looks fantastic. So I'm really, he's building that back up. So we painted it. We put the doors and the boot and the bonnet on and everything, but he's building everything else. And then it'll come back to us for a final buff and polish when he's, uh, when he's finally got it all together. That's fantastic. Yeah, brilliant car. As I say to uh, people, um, and I've said it on your theatre, I said whatever your expectations are of buying a classic car and what your budget is to restore the car, double it, right. lie to your, lie to, double it, lie to your wife, um, hide things from her uh, or your husband or whatever, just hide things from her because it's never going to be what you, you expect it to be. It's always going to be way much more than you ever thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, and and, and it's, it's one of those things where you can, it, we just... We talk through these things with customers and another thing we do is um, we set up an online uh, photo album so they then get invited to that photo album and every day we're doing work we take pictures as we go along they then go up into the album and the customer can see it so wherever they are in the country we've worked with people all over the country and they can look at those pictures they can comment on the pictures I get pinged an email saying there's a comment and they can ask questions. What's this? Why have you cut that out? And they can say, oh, that's that's looking really good and all that. And, and so again, like I said, the dialogue is good. And then what you also find then is when you start picking at little rust scabs that turn massive. And massive, yeah. You can, you can explain it to people a lot better because they can actually see what you're doing rather than them coming to see you going away, coming back, and you've put like three quarters of their car on as new panels, and they're like, well, why did that happen? You can actually show them and explain to them and have this dialogue, yeah. and it becomes a really good sort of working relationship that we have with everybody, and, and by the end of it, we're normally really pretty good friends with everybody because we try and be upfront and straight out there with it. There's no point glossing over anything, or it's just hit them with it and then they kind of stagger a bit and then come back and it's normally okay <laughs> it's such a busy show for us and i know every time i come past uh, your restoration theater you've always got a huge audience there you're always flat out and as you say we're knackered by the time you leave and, yeah. and whatever um it is a big show do you ever get a chance to get around and see other parts of the show because i don't know everything i've ever seen you over at the live stage you seem to be just locked into the place you're at yeah, quite a lot of the time. I mean, we normally, we sometimes try and get across. I do, we do, what we try and do is in, a, in the morning, because we get the special wristbands that get us in a bit early, we try and get there bang on when we can get in. So we get a quick walk around while it's nice and quiet. And sometimes if the security guards are on in a good mood, we can get a walk around at night as well. So we try and do, do that. We've been across and seen you guys on, um, on your live stage couple of times the time you had Frank Stephenson there we came back to your wheeler dealers yeah. party. so that was fantastic that night I, yeah, that cool. man is such a dude isn't he he's he just is awesome. such a dude he is just awesome we love him we yeah. love him dearly uh, yeah you're right I, I call that the Beyonce tour uh, okay. so I think we get to do that we get to sneak in after yeah. hours when there's no public there and we just get to run around the place, a bit like you know Beyonce shutting down Harrods and yeah, yeah, going around and around. It's um, it's like I'm like a kid in a toy shop, and that's why it's so painful this year to miss it. It really is so painful, and and not to see you and hang out yeah. with you and uh, educate the audience a little bit more because I we've both been doing it for years, but every time you go, there's a new technology, there's a new process, there's a new way of restoring a car which we can share with the audience particularly you yeah and, and the thing is we're, we're we're human beings aren't we at the end of the day we need interaction with each other and 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 you know and when you've got that many people who are on the same page as you it's all cars and all that kind of stuff it's just it's just a really good place to be so you don't only run the restoration theater and uh do what you do at the shows but you also got your own garage so yeah. what are you working on at the minute well, today I've been uh, finishing off the, the side of a, an Alpha uh, Spider, a Junior 1600 Spider Series 3. Nice. Another really nice customer 
John, he ha he absolutely drives the wheels off this thing through the summer. It's got 190,000 kilometers on it. Brilliant. Used to be uh, wrong side drive, it's now right side drive. Um, and so that came again, that was one. Uh, there's a lot of little jobs. There was a fuel leak, um, the clutch was making a funny noise, some bushes to do on the suspension and things like that. All sort of upkeep stuff you would imagine of a car with that many miles on it. But then he said, oh, can you just have a look by the front passenger jacking point? There's a little bit of scab of rust. <laughs> and so I've ended up putting a sill on that side, a step on that side. And then because the sills go behind the front and rear wings on them, you have to cut the bottom of the wings off. So I've done that. And I've also cut the spare wheel well out today as well, because that was all rotten. So luckily you can get the parts for these things. They're quite well serviced by the... Um, classic Alfa Romeo community. So that's that's good. So we're on with that. We've come to the end of a Dodge Charger recently, which is massive. The American cars are so big. Um, it's, I, could, I could park my Mini on the boot lid of this thing. It's absolutely huge. So that came to us fresh, again, fresh off the boat sort of thing from America. We've put floors, a boot floor, and had to redo a lot of American restoration, which normally involves pop rivets and an absolute ton of filler. Yeah. So the bottom yeah. of the rear quarter panels was literally pop riveted on. Nice panel, but pop riveted on and then just loads of filler over it. So we took all that out, uh, welded everything on, um, and that now has just gone into black epoxy primer to go back to the customer who's going to do um, engine wiring and all that kind of interior wow. stuff before yeah. it comes back to us to finish because uh, it's going to end up looking like the one that's in um, Fast and the Furious. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Lovely. Um, now, I've, I've had a Dodge Charger, and you're right, they are the size of a church. Yeah. And, uh, they take about as much as rebuilding the church to restore them, so I've got first-hand experience there. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bit of a Porsche boy as well, aren't you? I am, yeah. I've got um, a little bit of a Porsche collection. I'm, I'm working on three at the moment, three that uh, I'm hot rodding at the moment as well, uh, which I'm, I'm really pleased with. And uh, I've just done a bit of fabrication, and that was basically uh, learning from the skill set I get from you. Uh, when I watch you at the Restoration Theatre, uh, I got a 1969 2.2T, uh, a Turin, and uh, quite common on the the Porsche had two rear seat buckets mm -hmm. uh, underneath the car, they're quite low to the ground, and the two rear seat buckets are, are rotted out, even though it's a Californian car. Uh, so I found uh, a, a part of a frame that still had the, the rear seats and the buckets. I zip wheeled them out um, and then fabricated them into my car. And uh, honestly, uh, I, I, I had a little bit of help with a guy called Brian. Uh, but I did most of it myself. I've been over my shoulder. There was a little bit of, uh, uh, of lead bag work to just get them in the right shape. And uh, once I'd done it and etch primed them, uh, Brian stood back and said to me these words, it doesn't look like anyone's been there. And right. I thought, I thought, ah, that's amazing that somebody said that to me. It was yeah. such a good feeling. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we try and do with all the stuff. Um, there was, there's bits on the charger that we did around the back lights where there's some little pressings and things. So we, we ran our panels through the swaging machine so you get the step in the past and everything you need. So um, I had a guy come last night who's got a uh, Plymouth Barracuda that he's wanting us to do some work on. And I, so I was showing him around the charger and I said, oh, we've repaired that. And he was like looking at it and touching it and going, really? I said, yeah, yeah. I said, that old bit there's new and, he's, and he couldn't see it. So that, that is, like you said, that gives you a bit of pride but um, from the Porsche thing, we've just recently finished one that you maybe not, you might want one in your collection, you might not, but it was a Porsche tractor. Ah, oh, now, now you're talking, you know, I've got a little, like, there is something weak at the knees. When I, 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 I've done a Fergie tractor last year, I yeah. restored one, uh, but every time I go past a Porsche tractor, they are the most exquisite looking, they don't look like tractors, they're works of art. That's what they are, and the most beautiful tractor in the world. So, have you been working on one? Yeah, yeah. We, with a, a local guy, um, Gary, he came in and uh, he said, oh, I've, I've got this. It was the bonnet and the front panel, and then we did the, the wings and the seat 
and some other bits. It's most of the body work. He's done the engine and gearbox and all the transmission and everything himself. And then we sort of did the body work for him and he, he brought it in. So obviously it being a tractor, it's, it's had hard life. So it was battered. So we straightened all the bonnet, panel beated the bonnet up and then uh, remade some of the front panel. Then the, the, the actual badge on these is the hinge. So we had to get all that working uh, and then we've uh, painted everything and put that together. Hopefully that's going to go to the local Porsche Centre in Leeds when it's done and sit in their showroom for a little while. And will you be able to borrow it back and bring it as a bit of an ornament when we back together at the NEC? It, to be fair, Mike, I'd really like to bring it. I mean, Gary is a, is a top guy and I'm pretty sure he'd, uh, he'd let us have it and it, it'd look really well sort of where our theatre is at the far end, just sort of sat with a, with a bit of white picket fence around it. It'd look fantastic. So yeah, I might have to do that actually, mate. I think you've cracked a good idea there. Well, listen, Mike, I can't wait uh, for the day that me and you get back together again. Uh, hopefully it's not going to be too far in the distant future. And by the time we come around to next spring, uh, we'll be back together at the PC Restoration Show. If not, then, you know, it'll be later on in the year when we're doing the classic car show. But I'm very, very much looking forward to, to working with you again and seeing you again. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they find you? Well, they can look. Uh, we've got a website, gilbert-michelson.co.uk. And uh, we're also on Instagram and Twitter. I've got and Facebook, and I've got my personal one on Facebook. I ideally go through the um, the Gilbert Michelson one on uh, Facebook, and then we can normally get in touch with people that way. Uh, and try and keep up to date with putting stuff on of what we're doing, anything that's happening, and any any news from our end that we can sort of share with people. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Just normal channels, really, social medias. Normal. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely no problem. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year. You too, mate, and welcome home. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Yes.